Hello everyone. In this session, we're going to look at the tax process assessment two. So that's assessment from the ATU website, and we're going to practice few questions from the assessment two. So let's start. The first question we have here, task one for nine marks. So let's have a look what we have here. This task is about understanding and calculating UK tax law principle relating to VAT, registration and deregistration and a special scheme. So the first question you will always see like that. So the question will come from registration, deregistration and the special scheme. This task contain A to D. Let's read this question, what we have here. A VAT register trader sell an item to a VAT register uh, retailer for 1500 plus VAT of 300. The retailer sell the item for 2300 plus VAT of 460 to a non-VAT registered business. So this is a very much uh, precise question and this question is very common in the exam. All we have to understand from this question, that is if a person is a VAT registered, then VAT is not the cost for them. Now, if you have a look, this one is says like a VAT registered trader sell an item. So VAT registered trader sell an item to a VAT registered retailer. So this two is a completely zero. There is no impact because if I am VAT registered and if I'm selling to the VAT registered retailer, so for both of us, the VAT is not a cost because I'm going to get my VAT back. So VAT will be back. So VAT is not the cost for me. And also for the retailer, the VAT is also not cost for them because they will also get their VAT back. For that reason, VAT is not cost for both of them at all. The next one is a little bit different. The retailer sell to a non-registered VAT business. So what will happen? The retailer will get their VAT back, but finally the non-registered business or maybe the customer he or she will not be able to get the VAT back. For that reason, 460 VAT, this person is paying non-registered VAT. Uh, this is the cost for them. So VAT will be the cost for them. For example, uh, this person is paying 2300 plus VAT. So actual cost will be 2300 plus VAT. But before the, the cost will be only 1500, not the 300 because 300 will get back by both of them. So summary here is if someone is VAT registered, the VAT is not a cost for them. But if someone is not VAT registered, the VAT is cost for them. Let's complete this statement, this question. So let's have a look what we have here. Complete the following statement. The VAT registered trader who sold the item 1500 plus VAT, uh, including the VAT of zero as cost to the business. As I said before, 1500 plus VAT or whatever it is, both are VAT registered. So VAT is not cost for them. The VAT registered trader who purchased the item. So you can see here the retailer, he purchased the item 1500 plus VAT and sold 2300 plus VAT will include the VAT of again zero for both retailer and the trader. So the trader, he don't have any cost for the VAT and also the retailer have no cost for the VAT because both of them will get back the VAT. Finally, the last one it says, a non-registered business who purchased the item for 2300 plus VAT will include a VAT cost of how much? 460. Very simple, because if I'm non-registered with the VAT, I'll not be able to claim the VAT back. So this is the uh, cost for me. So for me, the total cost is 2300 plus 460. All right, the next one we have here, identify which one of the following business may register for voluntary for the VAT. Now you have to understand one thing. When you register voluntarily for the VAT, normally no business won't register for the VAT because as soon as they register for the VAT, they have to charge VAT top of the net amount. For example, if they used to charge 100 pound to their customer, now they have to charge 120. And the cost for the customer will be increased, but for him, the net income will be still same. For that reason, the customer will not be happy. Customer will pay more. So for that reason, the business try to always avoid the VAT as long as they can. But in some cases for the business, it may be helpful 
if they register for the VAT, even though they are under the threshold or it is not required by law, but they still want to register for the VAT because there are some advantages they can have. And we call it voluntary registration for the VAT. Now let's try to understand why someone can register voluntarily for the business. The first reason could be, uh, it's a very simple understanding. If someone is start a business, he need to make a lot of investment. For example, we start a business and we buy a lot of computer, we buy a lot of furniture. And uh, until I register with the VAT, I cannot claim it back. For that reason, even I don't have any sales at all. It's still I'm considering to register with the VAT because by registering with the HMRC, I'll be able to claim my input VAT. That could be one of the reasons. Let's have a look what they're saying here. It says, identify which one of the following business may register voluntarily for the VAT. The first one is says a business providing services which are outside the scope of VAT with an annual turnover 105. Even, even though they are more than 85,000 pounds, the VAT threshold, but still they don't have to register for the VAT and they cannot do it. The reason is the question says clearly outside the scope of VAT. That means they're exempted supply. Remember that if someone only make exempt supply, they are not allowed to register for the VAT. So they cannot register even if they want. So this is not relevant at all because they're not allowed to register for the VAT. A business making wholly zero rated supply with an annual turnover of 70 um, 8,000. This is very relevant. Let me tell you why. A business making wholly zero rated supply. Zero rated supply means every time they make a sales, they only charge zero rated VAT. So they multiply the VAT with zero rated. That means for the customer, they don't have to pay any VAT. Now, if they register voluntarily, what will happen? They can claim back their input VAT. So for the customer, there is no extra cost because the rate for the VAT is zero. So there is no additional cost for the customer. But on the other hand, as soon as I register with the volunteer VAT, I can claim back all the input VAT. So this could be the very valid reason to register for the VAT voluntarily. The next one is says a business making a mixer of a standard and a zero rated supply. So I am here. I'm selling both standard where I'm charging the VAT and also I have some product that is zero rated. Then I'll turn over from the standard rated 65 and zero rated 30,000. Now this one will have no impact because I will charge zero rated anyway. But as soon as I register for the uh, standard rated volunteer VAT registration, so I have to charge 20% top of this amount. So customer need to pay more. So it's not bringing anything good for me, even though I can claim my input VAT, but it's not very valid reason because I don't know how much VAT I'm going to claim back. So for that reason, it's not going to be a very good idea. I will register for the VAT voluntarily because my standard supply is more than the zero rated supply. So I'll say number two is the most valid reason for the VAT registration voluntarily. All right, let's move to the next one. The next one we have here, Number three, the following three business operate special VAT scheme. Now, when I say special, that means they're not a standard. So special means either their cash accounting scheme, either their annual accounting scheme, or either their flat rate scheme. So they have a different, different scheme, but it is not a standard for sure. Let's have a look. The first one, they said A Limited has been operating the cash accounting scheme for several, several years. So I will advise, make sure you understand what is cash accounting scheme, what is annual accounting scheme, what is flat rate. Make sure to revise the chapter to understand it better way because in the exam, definitely there will be a question. So A Limited for several years, last few years, they are operating with the cash accounting scheme. Cash accounting scheme is very simple. If I receive the money from the customer, then I pay the VAT. And if I pay to my supplier, if I already paid to my supplier, only in that case, I will claim the VAT back from the HMRC. So if something is outstanding, for example, I just make a sales today, but my customer didn't pay me until next 30 days, I'm not going to pay the VAT. So VAT is not paid until the money is collected from the customer, or I'm not claiming the input VAT until I actually paid to my supplier. That's the cash accounting scheme. 
The next one, it says B limited is a limited cost business. Now, what is a limited cost business? A limited cost business, remember that you have to remember what is limited cost business. And uh, the limited cost business, when you have a certain threshold, for example, when your purchase is uh, a certain limit should not cross, then you will treat it as a limited cost business. Now, I'll show you a little bit later on what is a limited cost business. Let's read the question properly first. Register for the VAT three months ago under the flat rate scheme. Now, the flat rate scheme could be uh, suitable for some company, could not be suitable for some company. One thing you have to remember, if someone chooses the flat rate scheme, we always calculate the VAT on the gross amount, not the net. The next one we have here, it says C-Limited has been operating the flat rate scheme for the three years as it's not a limited cost business. So if they are not limited cost business, remember that if someone is a limited cost business with the flat rate, so limited cost business cannot claim the input VAT back. So if you are a limited cost business and if you are a flat rate, you cannot claim the input VAT back what we actually pay to the uh, supplier. So uh, let's uh, quickly have a look at the answer. The first statement is say A-Limited does not uh, does not pay VAT to HMRC until the money has been received from the customer. That's absolutely true because A Limited operating the cash accounting scheme and he don't have to pay the VAT until he collects from the customer. The next one is says B Limited pay VAT on the gross turnover at the rate of 19%. So it's not actually 19%. Uh, let me show you what is the a limited cost business because it's a very important to see this one. So a limited cost business, limited cost business. So if you have a look this explanation on the book, it says a limited cost business. A trader has a limited cost if the flat rate will be 16.5% inclusive VAT turnover. So if someone uh, are limited cost trader, the flat rate will be 16.5% of VAT inclusive turnover. That means with the VAT. Remember that not VAT exclusive, VAT inclusive. And the rate will be 16.5%. Now who is a limited cost trader? Limited cost trader is one whose purchase of goods are less than either less than either 2% of the turnover or 1,000 per year. So you need to be very careful with this two threshold. If not, then the rate is not 16.5. Very careful with that. If they fulfill the condition of a, uh, a limited cost trader, then they can only charge 16.5% the flat rate scheme. So if we now go back to the question and we can see what is the question was asking. So here it says, B limited pay VAT on the gross turnover at a rate of 19%. That's not true because on the question is a B limited is a limited cost business, register VAT for three month flat rate scheme. So all we understand, like if you are a uh, limited cost, then 16.5, not 19. So it's false. C limited, brought one ITP equipment which cost 500 on a, of VAT at a standard rate. So 500 is the VAT on a standard rate. C Limited can recover the input VAT paid. So let's read the uh, what type of company it is. If you go to the top, it says C Limited has been operating the flat rate scheme for three years and is not a limited cost business. So if I'm not a limited cost business and if I pay any input VAT, actually I can claim back the VAT. So that's true. So C Limited brought one item of equipment which cost 500 of VAT at the standard rate. C Limited can recover the input VAT paid. That's true. So you have to be careful when you answer the limited cost business because in some case, when the flat rate we have, some case we are not allowed to claim back the input VAT. In some case we can. So you need to make sure you you read the whole story, how's it work. All right, the next one we have here, DAISY PLC has been operating an annual accounting scheme for several years. There will be always a question in the exam from the annual accounting scheme. Annual accounting scheme is the scheme where you submit the final return once in a year on the month number 14. So after 12 months, 
the HMRC will allow you another two months. So you make the final submission on month number 14. Identify the date by which their return must be submitted for the year ending 31st of March 21. When completing the date, you must enter year in full. So if my year is ended 31st of March 21, remember that from this day, I have two more months. So that will be April and May. So we will have to be submitted 31st of May. And obviously that will be my deadline. So the way annual accounting scheme work, we have to start paying the VAT in advance from the month number four till month number 12. And after that, HMRC will allow me two more months to do the final calculation and make the final submission on month number 14. So we'll go here and we're going to say that. So it's a 31st of May. So 31st of May, 2021. All right, so the next one we have here that says taxable turnover for the next financial year ending 31st of March 2022 is shown following below, okay? Select the date DAISY Limited must withdraw from the annual accounting scheme. Now, the annual accounting scheme, there is a restriction. If you reach the turnover within 12 months, remember that, within 12 months. So our year is ending 31st of March. So it started from April 21 and will end on uh, 31st of March 2022. So that's 12 months. So for whole year, 12 months. Remember that do not consider in the middle. You have to check the whole year. So if I reach 1.6 million, then I have to I have to get out from this scheme. So if my uh, taxable turnover reach 1.6 million, I have to uh, tell the HMRC, I have to give a notice to HMRC to uh, make a withdrawal from this annual accounting scheme. Now you can see here when I'm here, uh, almost uh, December 2021 here, I'm already crossing 1.6 million. So we have here 1.7 million. So we have crossed more than 1.6 million, but do not say it's a December 21. Remember that, do not say December 21, because we have to wait 12 months, even though in the middle of the year, we reach the threshold, but we cannot uh, tell the HMRC because uh, who knows, maybe in next month, our sales will be less or something could happen. So for that reason, HMRC allow us the whole year. So we need to look at the whole 12 month. And after that, if the threshold is still more than that, then you have to tell the HMRC like, we like to withdraw from this scheme. And within 30 days, um, we have to do it. So we have here, uh, uh, we can see we have uh, uh, March 22. So this is our date, select the date, DAISY, PSC mass withdraw from the annual accounting scheme. So 31st of March, 22. Remember that we have to wait the whole year. So if we want to quickly read that, we can have a look here. So it says annual accounting scheme is very important. Every time when you do the question, you always um, look at the explanation from the book. So annual accounting scheme. have to always look at the condition and the condition will tell us when we have to uh, withdraw from the scheme. We have a condition for all the scheme we have, like for example, cash accounting scheme or annual accounting scheme. So we need to make sure we look at all. So if you look at the annual accounting schemes, you have a condition here and the condition we can see here, it says once registered with the scheme, if a VAT exclusive, VAT exclusive taxable supply exceed 1.6 million at the end of the VAT accounting year. Remember that at the end of the VAT accounting year. Notice must be given to HMRC 30 days and the business must leave the scheme. All right, so this clear now. So we need to make sure we always have the explanation so that we understand why we're doing this thing. Because if you don't read the explanation, you'll forget the answer after. 
So you take 31st of March, 2022, at the end of the VAT year. All right, the next one we have here. So let's move to the next one. The next one we have activity two, the task two. So on the task two, we have here for eight marks. This task is about calculating and accounting for the VAT. This task contain A to B, T limited, VAT registered and sale mixer of standard rated, reduced rated and the zero rated supply. So I have all three. Complete the table to show the VAT and the net amount. All right, so let's do that. So first one is a standard rated supply. A standard rated supply is quite easy because we know standard rate is 20%. So if the gross is 420, how much is the VAT inside? Very simple, the VAT will be on the top and on the bottom, it will be 100 plus VAT. So it will be 120. Otherwise, you can say six divided by six because 20 over 120 is basically the fraction of six. So if we do 420 divided by six, that will tell us how much is the VAT inside. So that is 70. So that's very straightforward. How much is the VAT inside? 70. And if we minus the gross minus VAT, so 420 minus 70, so 420 minus 70, that gives me 350, the net amount. So that's quite simple. The next one, we have the reduced rate. Remember that reduced rate is 5%, 5%. So the way we did before, we do the same way. So 420 we have here. And we do 5105. So we do 5 over 105 times 420, and that gives me 20. So 20 is the VAT, and my net will be 400. You have to remember this rate, so reduce rate is 5%. All right, the next one we have here, it does limited offer a customer a prompt discount if the payment is received within seven days. The customer is not registered for the VAT. If the customer is not registered for the VAT, so VAT is the cost for them. Identify the effect of VAT of the customer taking advantage of the prom discount. Now, the way uh, VAT work, remember that, first, we always calculate our discount. For example, let's say one product price is 10 per unit. And if we buy 100 unit, so my net is 1,000. And from this 1,000, first, we minus the trade discount, if we have any, for example, if we have a, a trade discount 200, then we minus the bulk discount. Let's say we have a bulk discount 300. So actually our net amount is 500 where we charge the VAT. So VAT will be charged 20% on 500, not 1000. Very much careful with that. But if we have a prompt discount and if we take advantage of that, what will happen? I will get more advantage. Now, for example, if uh, the 20% on 500 is a 100, so my net will be 600, the gross will be 600. So I need to pay 600 to my uh, supplier. But if the supplier offer me prompt discount, they, if they say like, if you pay within seven days and I'll give you another 5%, that means I can pay less than 5% of 600. So if I say 600 times 5%, so that gives me 30 pound more discount. In this 30 pound, we have some VAT. So 30 divided by six. So five is the VAT and 25, I'm getting the discount. So I'm saving some VAT as well. If I take the prompt discount, that means my total VAT portion will be decreased. So the second one, VAT will be decreased. The next one we have here, T Limited made the following sale on 23rd of May, 2021. And we can see we have some explanation here. They are telling us a uh, standard rated good for 120 plus VAT. So standard rated good, 120 plus VAT. So let's have a look how much it is. 120 plus VAT, 24. So it is 144. And zero rated good. So there is no VAT, 96. So if I added this two is 240. T limited issue a simplified invoice to the customer. So simplified invoice to the customer. Remember that simplified invoice is the invoice if the total amount inclusive the VAT is not more than 250. So inclusive, remember that, not exclusive. This question can be very tricky in the exam. So you have to remember VAT inclusive 
no more than 250, then you can issue a simplified invoice. Simplified invoice is the invoice that is not detailed invoice. So you have some simple information on this invoice and it is allowed to do it. So the amount will be 240. Remember that including the VAT, that's why we take the 96. Select the latest date, T-limited must issue an invoice to the customer. When completing the date, you must enter the full year. Now remember that the day we make a sales, 23rd of May, from that day, we have 30 days to send the invoice to customer, 30 days. Now, do not just assume like 23rd of May, that means 30 days will be 23rd of June. Do not do that. So you it will make a mistake. So you need to remember from 23rd of May, you have to keep counting. So from 23rd of May, if you keep counting, so in May, we have till 31st of May. So we have here another eight days. So eight days in May. And we have to calculate another 21 days from June. So from the June, 21 days. So that eight plus 21 is 30 days. Do not just guess, just don't, don't jump to the next month. So 30 days. So that means 21st of June will be the date I have to issue the invoice within 30 days. So I'll say 21st of June. And the year is 2021. And that's it. So that's how we can carry on all this question. You can see it's not very difficult, but every time when you revise the question, you have to make sure you read from the book as well so you understand better and you remember for long. If you have any question, if you don't still understand anything, you can email me. My email will be on the description. So I'll be able to uh, help you more if I can. And if you need any other support, uh, always feel free to email me. And also, if you like to learn uh, some accountancy uh, practical training or any courses you like to learn, for example, any software like QuickBooks Zero or uh, how to prepare the accounts, limited company accounts, you can check this website. That's called uh, First in Learning. I will put the link on the description. And you have here few courses that could be very helpful for your work experience and for the next job. For example, here you can see you can learn bookkeeping, payroll beauty, or training for the assistant accountant or management accountant or financial accountant, or if you like to build your own accountancy practice. So check this website. That could be very much helpful and it will teach you the up-to-date software and you can make yourself ready for your next job. So um, obviously, like, uh, uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to email me. And uh, thank you very much for watching.